As the story of Vic Mignogna and the sexual allegations against him continue, members within the community that had originally accused Vic Mignogna of said sexual assault, such as Jamie Marchi, Monica Rial, Jesse Pridemore, and many others, are taking it upon themselves in going on Twitter in having to not only blame the fans that are supporting Vic Mignogna in this scenario for having to fuel the entire situation and making things worse, but also blaming YouTubers, blaming people asking questions, and basically having to come out and saying that YouTubers are liars, Nick Rakita, the individual that featured Ty Beard on his channel, is a liar, and how nobody in this community knows what they're talking about, either that or purposely having to shame people for not siding with them, given that people on Twitter are going about and questioning their motives, and for that, they're not too appreciative of that, and they're going as far as to block people for simply having to ask questions. Now, before we begin, if you guys are new to this channel, and of course love anime and Dragon Ball alongside, want to be up to date with all the latest involving Vic Mignogna, Monica Rial, Jamie Marchi, Ron Toy, and the entire situation, then be sure to go on ahead and punch that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload and to be up to date with all latest news and information, along with checking out and subscribing to my primary channel Unreal and Gaming, where on there we are going to be covering lots of Dragon Ball content, anime, and gaming, so make sure you guys go on ahead and check that channel out over there, alongside following me on Twitter at Unreal and Gaming for all the latest updates, including if you guys have any articles and or pictures to tag me in or share with me, be sure to go on ahead and follow me on Twitter. As following the events of Ty Beard having to be featured on Nick Riquetta's live stream, we have Jamie Marchi who went along in posting some very interesting things over on her Twitter, including replying to fans as Jamie Marchi went on to state as I quote, well, you might want to check your own sensitivities. If I think someone who attempts blackface looks like they fell in shit because they're terrible at makeup, that doesn't make me a racist. He's the one in blackface, if you recall. As Nick Riquetta goes on to reply to Jamie as he goes on to state, and I quote, check your own sensitivities. Wow, just wow, basically memeing Jamie's sensitivities as she's going around basically saying that people who ask questions and or are asking her questions are harassing her as she goes on to meme Nick and having to state, and I quote, oh look, it's hashtag blackface lawyer himself. Wow, absolutely wow. And the meme itself that she went along to post reads as follows. Thank you for the tweet. I have screenshot it and sent it to my attorney of the State Bar of Minnesota for ethical misconduct. I will not be intimidated. Have a nice night. And this didn't sit well with so many people, as of course, Jamie Marchi goes on to continue. In the same thread, an individual that goes by the name of Wolf went on to respond, and I quote, Geez, are you a grown woman? or a five-year-old. You're acting like a child. You should stop before you get yourself in more trouble than you already are. As Jamie Marchi goes on to respond, you should stop attacking whenever hashtag blackface lawyer asks. So many sheep following a wolf. Oh, that's why you guys like to say beta so much, which doesn't make any sense as to the beta comment because none of that correlates with the context of her having to blame people in being followers, which Nick never encouraged anybody to harass harass said individuals, so what you're basically saying, if someone has a question or asks anything of you, or even goes as far as to make a comment, you're automatically going to assume that that person was sent by someone simply for the sole reason of attacking you, that in and of itself does not make any sense. So if someone questions you or makes any type of comment towards you, you're automatically going to assume that you're following someone and going as far as to not name the individual, but labeling him as blackface lawyer? I don't understand that, but it continues. Because Jamie then goes on in having to state, and I quote, they just want to attack everything because it makes them look less horrible, which is completely stupid to question someone's stance and to point out their holes in their story without them having to play the victim card, which Jamie is doing right now before everyone's very eyes, especially if you guys have been keeping up with everything she's been saying, as an individual by the name of Joshua goes on to reply, yeah, it's just I'm a at how some people can be, you know? As Jamie replies, I do. Remember, they're all just really loud. 
Lord. They're not the majority, not even close. As Joshua responds, I know, but when I see this and what this whole thing has come to, I just feel like crying my effing eyes out just how messed up humanity can be, which I don't understand where he's coming from, but I digress. As Jamie continues, I know, there are how many people on this earth? 1% of them are straight up chaotic evil. That 1% may be loud online and make a lot of noise, but it's just 1%. Don't let these people get to you if you can help it. They're not worth a second thought. So right there, she's making the insinuation that the 1% of people that she's labeling as Vic supporters or people that are asking her questions or coming to her with comments, she's making that insinuation that 1% of people that make up this earth are straight up chaotic evil and that people that are just quote loud on the internet are not the majority. This in and of itself is absolutely hypocritical, especially coming from someone that called for Vic Mignogna's head and balls on a plate, and you simply can't joke with having to condone these kind of things. So again, this all boiled down to the women that are accusing Vic because if you simply went to the police when this happened, if this happened, in getting rid of a supposed sexual offender or rapist, because that's what the world wants, that's what we all want to see, our rapists and sexual offenders be put in jail because we have daughters, mothers, sisters, grandmas, and nobody, nobody wants to see the females in their life, including those who are one, be assaulted in any kind of way. The question lingers, why did the individuals that are accusing Vic of said actions not go to the police? The police. The police are the number one foundation for cases like this because the police have justifiable reasons in putting you away and thus later bringing you to court. So that's what people are challenging is the fact that if this was a recurring thing and if this kept going on and on and on and if people are if these individuals are telling the truth then how come nobody has a police report and or went to the police to begin with so what jamie is calling for at least what she was calling for early in february was for the complete character assassination of vic mignana and it's all archived and proven that way so again she's very hypocritical in her stance but it continues as jamie marchi goes on to state and i quote it looks like he fell in shit face to me. What's worse? blackface lawyer or shitface lawyer. As an individual that goes by the name of Spencer goes on to reply to Marchie and stating, wait, so you think dark skin looks like shit? Big yikes. As Jamie goes on, when did I say that? As Spencer replies in the tweet I just responded to. As Jamie continues, well, you might want to check your own sensitivities if you think someone who attempts blackface looks like they fell in shit because they're terrible at makeup, that doesn't make me a racist. He's just one blackface if you recall, I would like to thank all of the little attack doggies for commenting on this post all at once. It makes blocking you so much easier. So as you guys can see, as Spencer went along to ask a question, she assumingly enough blocked him and many others in that same thread that addressed her comments on blackface lawyer, shitface lawyer, and these kinds of things, which again, as a professional, all we're simply asking you to do is act like a professional. Nobody's really trying to silence Jamie Marchi, but more or less letting her know she has to conduct herself in a professional manner. Otherwise, it's just going to make her look a lot worse. However, it doesn't stop there. As Jessie Pridemore also took to Twitter, as she went on to state, and I quote, I love how Vic stands think the ways they are making fun of my last name are new and or unique. LMAO, I've had this name for 33 years. I've heard it all. You're not creative. As she goes on to continue, Hey Vic stands, shameless is not the opposite of my last name, which takes more brain power to figure out. But there you go. Run with it, you little scamps. So basically insulting the entirety of anyone out there who truly does support Vic Mignogna by calling them Vic stands and calling them dogs and calling them sheep and all kinds of things just because they stand opposite to what she believes in. They stand in opposite to her claims about Todd and all the other individuals that she had been involved with. So she's basically blaming the same people in having to refer to them as something less than her. Meanwhile, she wants people to stand with her while making comments like that. So in a nutshell, it doesn't make any sense in seeing where she currently stands with the entire situation and how she's treating people simply having to 
to ask questions or opposing her stance, but I leave you guys with a clip from Nick Ricketta's channel over on his live stream, in which I do want to go on ahead and emphasize that you guys ought to go on ahead and check him out. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. Once more, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, take the time to hit that subscribe button on this channel. Subscribe to my other channel, Unreal and Gaming. The link to that will be located down below. Follow me on Twitter at Unreal and Gaming. Slap a like down below if you guys are in support for Vic Mignogna, and leave your thoughts down below as to what you guys think about this so without wasting any more time let's jump straight into the clips here we go Funimation you know you can avoid the disaster that's coming the disaster is here Funimation look at this look at this for the in the past week and a half this topic on this show has been some of the top nighttime YouTube live streams. Thank you all so much for that, by the way. Has been in the top. When Vic's lawyer came on yesterday, we had almost 10,000 live viewers. At 11 to 2 in the morning, we had almost 10,000 live viewers. People care about this, and your PR on this is an abject disaster. Now look, everyone can understand what happened. You had a bunch of shrieking voice actors who you know you don't care about as much as you like to pretend that you're caring about them. You know you don't. They're independent contractors. They're putting your corporation and your money at risk. You, you listen to them because it seemed like you should. We get that. You're a corporation. It's 2019. You were about to have a bunch of bad press. You thought a bunch of bad press because one of your voice actors started getting accused by his co-workers of doing some crazy things. It makes perfect sense for you to have thought about how this would go and have thought, you know what? We should probably sever ties with Vic Mignogna. Everyone understands that. What happened next, you didn't predict. You didn't predict that Vic's fans would stand with him. You didn't predict that the social media narrative would go away from Vic is an assaulter to Vic was ruined by a bunch of shrieking harpies. You never could have guessed that to happen. We get it. We know. Most of us didn't think that was going to happen either. Most of if you go back and watch the initial commentary on this, most of us figured it was just another it was just another successful brigade. He was going to get run into the dirt on Twitter. He was never going to be able to show his face again because that's how it's gone over and over. We all missed it. It's not your fault for missing it. But read the writing on the wall. Look at your subscription numbers. Look at where the fan support is. Look at where social media is going. The, the people accusing Vic Mignogna are getting ratioed into oblivion. Their tweets, these are people with 20, 40,000 followers. Their tweets are getting less interaction than Twitter accounts with 200 and 300 followers. No one is on their side. No one is on your side. It's okay. We get it. Again, we were all fooled too. We're not special. You made the call that seemed like it was, you made the baseball call, right? You went with the statistics. You looked at the history. You said, this could be bad for business. We need to cut this. But what you found out was there were some unknown variables in there. Like your staff, who participated apparently in an investigation, coming out and lying in public days later. Just days later. Uh, like your staff running racist tirades all over Twitter just today. Like, like your staff uh, being shown to have maybe some interesting connections with other people that might look kind of like civil conspiracy and might even bring culpability to your executive branch, your executive group, your officers of your corporation. 
right? Especially if they were in on some of those emails or participated in them. I know you know you have voice actors who do have hiring and firing decisions making disparaging remarks about both Vic and Todd. I know you know that. And I know you know exactly which director I'm talking about who has made private, uh, private messages talking about how Vic is guilty of everything he did. I know you know who is responsible for that. And that person has hiring and firing authority from what I hear. That makes him a vice principal under Texas law. That brings Funimation into the conspiracy. If there is one. If there is one. So here's the thing, Funimation. Rooster Teeth, you're not immune either. But right now I'm talking to Funimation. You know how to resolve this. You know the only smart way to resolve this. You know, you pick up a phone, you call Mr. Beard, and you say, what do we need to do? We got wrapped up. We got wrapped up in the moment. We regret that decision. The smart business move is to figure out how to resolve this and move forward. You know that's the right way to do this because you do run a business. Now, I'm not going to say the voice actors know what's going on because they've shown to be largely incompetent at literally everything they do. But you guys run a corporation that was bought by Sony. You know the way to get around this is simply to settle. You know that. That's the way out. That's how you get past what you're facing. And let me just suggest, if you're going to rely on some, like, maybe, I, I don't know, right? I don't know what Funimation has. I know what your public statements are, and I know that those public statements are terrifyingly bad to have made, uh, to have made, for you to have made those. I know it's terrifyingly bad for you to have made those public statements about Vic Mignogna in his termination. You had no obligation to even mention the termination, yet you chose to, and then you chose to say there was an investigation, and then you chose to strongly imply that any reasonable person looking at it would infer that he was guilty of some sort of sexual assault or harassment. If you can't back that up, if you can't back that up, if it looks like your internal investigation came up inconclusive and it looks like maybe you didn't do a second internal investigation, but you just said following an investigation to give yourself the credibility to fire him, but is actually following the screeching of our other voice actors. If that's what happened, you're in for a world of hurt on this lawsuit. And if you think, because I've talked about anti-slap, there are other pretrial motions that could happen. If you are relying on a pretrial motion for your defense, I mean, I can't imagine a single legal team on earth other than the lawyers for Mark Wade. Good luck. And the lawyers for, oh my gosh, it's like a plague actually. It's like a plague. The lawyers for Fantastic Matt, uh, Matt Fantastic in the quartering case. You guys are all relying, it seems like, on a pretrial motion, like an anti-slap, the TCPA, uh, a motion to dismiss, a jurisdictional motion. It seems like you're relying on that as your sole line of defense. Because you think you can win there. That is the longest and dumbest gamble I can think of. If your only defense is pre-trial, my God, I hope you come to your senses. I hope that's not what you're thinking. Because, I mean, that would be, that would be mind-blowing <laughs> if, you, if you can't back up your statements. And remember, backing up those statements is going to rely on people who lied in public about the situation days later. Their credibility is going to be ripped to shreds. Do you want your credibility ripped to shreds? Or do you want to join the person in ripping their credibility to shreds? I don't know. You know there's a way out of it. You do. You know that it's there. It's what any smart attorney would be considering very strongly right now. Uh, but who am I, right? Who am I? Just a guy. Just a guy on YouTube. Just a guy on YouTube. Next. 
let's talk about those voice actors. Same speech, same speech. All you have to do is get your lawyer, you all say you have them now, to call Vic's lawyer. Do you really think he wants to pound you into dirt? You know Vic, you know Vic really probably doesn't want to do much of any of this. Some of you have reached out to Vic, Ron, right? Like you reached out to him. You said that on social media. You said, I called him, he didn't call me back. Whatever, like a jilted girlfriend, you uh, were mad that he didn't call you back. So then you went on to continue your defamatory rants. Okay, I got it. Here's the thing though. You were considering finding a way out of this. Nothing's been filed to my knowledge. Have you been served papers yet? You know the identity of the opposition's lawyer. Just call them. Just call them. Get your lawyer to call them. That'd be better probably. But oh my goodness. Why would you want to do this? I know it's it's fun puffery to sit on social media and say, we relish the lawsuit. Well, one, it's not going to be a we relishing the lawsuit, Ron. It's going to be you getting a, a lawsuit and Monica getting a lawsuit. That's two different people. You're not married. We discussed this. We discussed this. You guys can solve this problem. Settlement is the way out of pretty much all of civil litigation. Judges love settlements. Lawyers love settlements. Clients sometimes love settlements. You know the way to do it. It's silly to go on, but you know, if you go on, I will sit here and laugh every single day. And every single day, whether I'm covering it or not, I will chuckle and laugh at how bad of a decision you've made. But that's, uh, you know, that's the way out. It's, it's not complicated. It's not secret. It's the way out of all civil litigation. All right, Jesse Pridemore. Jesse pride more. Here we are. I think it's hilarious that the lawyer's goons are bullying me. No, no, they're bullying you because I darkened my skin for a costume when I've been very public about my dissent in what I did. Dissent in what I did and call it my worst mistake as a cosplayer. Oh man. It's a shame that when you're very public about it, people still don't forgive you, isn't it? Isn't that a shame, Jesse? It's almost like when you uh, when you hold people to a standard of damnation for anything outside of context or inside of context, no matter how long ago it occurs, that they might hold you to that same standard. Maybe. I don't know. I don't care about your cosplay. Uh, I don't care what you did. I don't think you were bad for doing it. Not at all. I think it's silly that you're apologizing so hard for a cosplay. But, you know, that's fine. If you want to keep apologizing for it, I guess. See if people listen. See how that works out for you, Jesse. I also work hard to educate people on why it's wrong. Thank you. Thank you for your service, white-splaining to people why blackface is wrong or why darkening your skin. Because you can't say blackface, can you? If you said blackface, then you might be in trouble. Oh, and the lawyer did actual blackface. Low photo in the comments. Now, not, not just darkened his skin for a cosplay. He did actual blackface. Oddly enough, Jesse... <laughs> Oddly enough, actual blackface. Uh, actual blackface, much worse than uh, pretend blackface, okay? If you're here to comment that you think it's okay, I'm deleting your comment. Whew. There we go. He what? OMG. OMG. Oh, here we go. But also, how does that have any bearing on the matter at hand, Mr. Lawyer Guy? They're actually talking to Jesse there. Which is not to minimize or ignore the importance of what you did or how you've handled it in the aftermath. Lonnie uh, Sapikow Sapikowski, a fellow Polak, bad-mouthing me, I think. It's an attack on credibility, 
Not a very good one, but in a civil suit like this, destroying credibility is very important to making a case. It's not a game anymore. You came after a man's money. You came after a man's reputation. And you came after a man's life. Now, now it's time to put up or shut your stupid mouths. We would all love for you to put up a shred of proof of proof but that proof now because you were so stupid in the beginning because you were so adamant about about destroying someone now that proof is going to come with the legal process and you're going to have to sit under oath and answer every single question and oh my god you better have good answers or those pants are dropping and you're getting bent over and you know it